But first, after what's probably been its worst week since elected, the Albanese government was forced to accept a series of opposition amendments in the Senate last night to address the mess of the 84 foreign criminals now loose on our streets with fears that 340 more are about to join them. Thanks to the opposition, these hardened criminals, including murderers, rapists and pedophiles, will at least now have to wear ankle bracelets. But frankly, the only place for them is in detention or preferably out of the country. The government was warned in June, so months ago, that the High Court was likely to reverse its previous judgment and order the release of these criminals. They were told by the High Court in June uh, that the High Court had changed its mind or had problems. They should have been drafting legislation from them. But despite that five-month warning, the Albanese government was completely flat-footed, thereby putting public safety at risk. And there's just no way the government should be able to get away with this because it was foreseeable to anyone who's ever worked in government. To anyone. Yeah, I think the, the most staggering part about all of this was that the government didn't necessarily have a plan for this potential outcome, despite you know, us not knowing the High Court's decisions that probably won't be pu published for some time to come. We don't want to go back to the drawing board, that's the issue. Yeah, that's, that's right. But the way that these things work, Sarah, is that uh, the, the, ju the, the judges give hints and uh, the government solicitors, uh, the KCs who are there, are advising the government uh, on prospects and likely outcomes. So uh, prudent governments look at a win, a loss, what that means. Do we need to draft legislation in anticipation? And there's plenty of examples where the government will come to us or when we were in government, we went mm. to the then opposition saying we've got to pass this bill today to, to clean up what is now a real problem that the court's created. And you do that within the law, obviously, or within yeah. the bounds of the Constitution, but that's not what the government's done here. On this issue, the PM and his government were culpably asleep at the wheel and are now scrambling to deal with a contingency they should have prepared for. Yesterday, as she introduced the legislation, Labor's Home Affairs Minister bragged... Her legislation was tough, she said, the toughest that had ever been drafted. And I've said it before and I will say it again, if I had any legal power to keep these people detained, I would. I would do it. Now, Speaker, we do not have that power. That is what the High Court has Order. told us. Order. So that is why we are putting forward a comprehensive response which deals with the community safety implications yeah. of this problem that are real, Speaker. That is why we release people in detention on the possible, the strictest possible legal, legal conditions. Now, by evening, that minister looked like an idiot because she was forced to accept every single one of the opposition's amendments. Worse still, as Peter Dutton pointed out on television this morning, if he was in charge, he said, the legislation would have done a whole lot more than just put ankle bracelets on the legs of criminals. Peter, the government was forced to accept all your amendments. It seems as though you might be writing the government's policy these days. <laughs> uh, Sarah, if I was writing the government's policy, these people would be back in detention because uh, we're talking about some pretty serious criminals. And the first and foremost thought here is for the victims. Mm. Uh, there was a, one victim, uh, a pregnant woman, who was murdered and blown up with explosives. Unbelievable. And a non-citizen. Uh, and now it turns out the government's paying... Uh, welfare to these 84 as well. They're staying in motel accommodation paid for by taxpayers. We had one hour to draft these amendments mm. and uh, there would have been a lot more that we would have done, but uh, time was not on our side yesterday. But we ended up getting some changes and I hope that that gives us a chance of uh, making the community a little bit safer. But while these people are out in the community, uh, it's a disaster. Make no mistake, Labor's in a world of political pain right now, not because the High Court made an awkward decision, but because it's turning out to be an increasingly clueless government on a whole raft of issues. Almost six weeks on from the October 7 atrocities in Israel and the immediate eruption of gas the Jews hate speech on streets in Australia, the Albanese government still can't decide whether the big problem is rampant anti-Semitism or an all but non-existent Islamophobia. The Prime Minister, currently in the United States, says he's committed to military strength but is actually starving all the other parts of our armed forces to pay for submarines that won't arrive for at least a decade. 
is union dictated workplace relations changes are sapping the economy of productivity on which our entire prosperity rests. And Labor's emissions obsession is closing down coal-fired power stations and demonising gas as well, when reliable 24-7 alternatives for power are years away. Anthony Albanese and his green left zealots keep saying there's a climate emergency. It says it's, a, it says it's the world's biggest challenge, as if. I mean, ask the Ukrainians, ask the Israelis, even ask the Taiwanese what the biggest threat is, and none of them will mention the temperature of the world in a few decades' time. Indeed, it's likely that the only way we'll avoid blackouts this summer is by telling large factories, big employers, to shut down. Meanwhile, despite Labor's promise to cut your power bill by $275 per household per year, power bills have actually increased by at least 20% in the past 12 months. On issues big and small, this government is either wrong-headed or confused. Of course, even an incompetent government can still win an election, but only if the opposition doesn't lift its game. And on that, over the past few months, Peter Dutton hasn't put a foot wrong. He was brave on The Voice. He read the community mood far better than his opponents. And this week, particularly in the Prime Minister's absence, he has dominated the Parliament. Now, for the Prime Minister, I reckon he's facing a torrid summer. And if this week is his best effort, so too are Australians.